So today I decided that I was going to do day two of sculpting in Nomad Sculpt. And I decided to do uh, Bulbasaur. So I didn't feel like creating my own character. And you can see the process of the old character right here getting to a new page. And I thought Bulbasaur would be really cute because everyone knows who he is. Everyone loves him. And I think he has a pretty big fan following. So... Uh, I hope that people like it. I was actually kind of nervous about doing this because it was a little bit more complex than just, you know, a big round head. Well, it's still round and it's still a lot of circles or spheres, I should say. Um, but it just was more of a complex design in the sense that I'm not too familiar with it and it's more animalistic rather than a lot of spheres. Now I did actually really enjoy making this because it was a little bit more challenging and I felt like it actually came out pretty good considering this is day two and again yes I have used Nomad Sculpt before just not consistently how I'd like especially since I really do want to go and get really good at sculpting because I think it's just a lot of fun. I've done clay sculpting in the past but there's no way I can afford all that clay, a kiln, and all of that. Maybe one day. But right now, that this is all I've got. This is what I've got. And I actually really enjoy it, especially because you can do it in your own home. And I do have a 3D printer, so I could technically print this guy. Maybe not him. I'd have to figure out because of the just like certain things printers can't do or I would have to use um, supports to uh, print the underbelly and all that but here you see I'm adding in the basic shapes like I said before you always want to start out pretty simple and then go in with the detail so he's looking more like a, a frog cat type thing um, and then I was really trying to figure out how I would have would do his um, bulb on the back of his back and at first I was like let me just sculpt it in but then I remembered a, the radial tool and now this tool is super useful if you want to make a lot of the same thing in a certain circle like a flower or a lotus or whatnot or a bulb and um, first I tried this way out and it looks quite silly actually because I'm trying to figure out how to use it again and how I would shape the items. So what you want to do is make pretty much a circle or whatever the shape is. It could be tubes or whatever, but I used a circle and then flattened it out because you will see that I actually, I think I delete these and do something. I start from scratch because I'm just like this. I've already messed it up so much and it was actually looking kind of cool if it wasn't Bulbasaur, maybe like Venusaur or uh, what's the third one? Venusaur, Megalodon, I don't know. But <laughs> I restart and start using the move tool with a low intensity, high, uh, large like stroke, uh, the size of the brush, there we go. Um, but anyways, um, I figure it out. I use like a twisting kind of motion, squish it down, and just kind of mess around with it till I find something I like, you know. Uh, at first I was like, this isn't working. So I used the inflate tool a little bit, you know. And it actually kind of reminds me of a dumpling. <laughs> and I was like, this looks more like a dumpling than his bowl. But you know what? We're just going to go with it. And then I did put the reference back up just so I could remind myself what he looks like. And I do know what he looks like, but just for the details and such. So then I add in the eyes, and actually I really like how the eyes turned out for this one versus yesterday. And they came out really pretty, I think, for him, and um, it was a lot easier. Let's just say that, maybe because I practiced yesterday and this is day two, so I'm getting back into the flow of things and all that. And then I use the crease tool to do his mouth and nose. And I do fix up his head because it was a little too round and I needed it to be a little bit more snootier, you know, um, shapely. But yes, I go back in, I do a lot of refixing, a lot of moving around the sculpture and things like that. Now I did have to remesh his mouth a few times and re-sculpt it, re-use the crease tool and things like that. 
This is where voxel remesh comes in handy because you can see if you go in on a sphere that you just place in, it can move it's not dense so you want a voxel remesh in order to get a cleaner uh, sculpt but this can run hard on your iPad because it does use more RAM so just be careful of that um, I've always noticed Nomad Sculpt works best when plugged in and take a break make sure the brightness is not completely up because I do notice if it is using a lot of RAM it will actually a darkened screen to try and save uh, power and all of that. And then I went in on his toes. I used the inflate tool, smoothed them down, and then I the fun part is coming up. Um, we're almost done with pretty much the base sculpt, and then we can get into drawing or not drawing, um, coloring him in. From the matte cap to the lit PBR and that's where you can actually color in your sculpture and I was just pretty much following the colors of the reference photo or reference picture but I did use my own discretion to do the colors I wanted because I wanted to, it's a lot of light colors in the photo and I wanted it to pop more have more um, a contrast like darks and lights so I tried one way to do his spots or whatever you would want to call them by sculpting a circle into the shape I wanted but then I remembered the masking tool now the masking tool is super useful if you don't want to do all this that you see on the screen right now and it is actually so helpful so let me show you what I mean Now the mesh tool, you can draw directly on the object that it's selected and it makes shapes, creating shapes a lot easier. And then you can just extract it and there it is. And you want to have a high triangle count for this because the higher the triangle count of the object, the better the um, extraction will be. It will be a lot smoother, it won't look funky, and you can always go in and refix it, like undo and then try again to see how smooth the drawing comes out. But that's really what I did, experimented again, and I love the masking tool now. It, I've found it so helpful to use. I do end up painting his toes, remaking or fixing his eyes so that they have the red glare or the red um, pupils, irises, what whatnot. And I don't add the white because I think it's just the glare from lighting, or and I think he looks cute without them. So I just added or I disregarded that, as you see see in the reference photo.
then I just really fix them up again and that's it and then before once you're done with the actual sculpt what you want to do is make sure you try out the presets of post processing you want to mess around with the settings find something you like because it will make your sculpture look a lot better this is kind of like rendering in blender and it just makes a good um what do you call it uh like a good post pro post production uh photo because you can screenshot it or download the rendered image and it just looks really good for instagram or wherever and where you're ever going to share it or post it online you know what i mean And you can see when I use the turntable, it just looks so much nicer and it comes out so great. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please subscribe and I'll be trying to update every other day. Bye!